Hello and welcome back. This is Franz Cantor here, cartoonist, illustrator, tune talker, big mouth. <laughs> um, I'm going to do another drawing. I'm going to do another drawing. And I um, hope you're with me and not watching the great debate, the presidential debate. Um, let's, let's do this thing. All right, so who am I doing today? I'm going to be doing this um, person here. Let's have a look. This is the subject for today. This is Judy Nadine, who's a, I um, hope I pronounced her name right, a uh, great Australian cartoonist, illustrator, and painter, and caricaturist. And look at that, that's beautiful. Like she does these incredible, that's Robert Plant. That's a lovely, uh, that's a lovely painting. Um, so she does these really iconic uh, caricatures, beautiful uh, amount of work, which is stunning, absolutely incredible. Um, and she loves music and it's a great Jimmy Barnes isn't it? it's fantastic this is her crazy um, look at that it's brilliant cool stuff so if you get a chance you should uh, at Judy Nadine will take you to her her feeds her website and her um, Instagram as well so um brilliant stuff look at this tim minchin so really lovely intensity that she, she gets so perfect likeness lovely caricatures um oh, look at that it's fleetwood mac what's her name what's her name <laughs> from fleetwood mac um that's how much i know about fleetwood mac it's really beautiful this is Judy, so she's always with glasses uh, normally. Um, it's Joni Mitchell. So she's just brilliant um, paintings, They're very, very uh, thoughtful and um, emotional, like really cool. So this is the photograph which I'm um, basing my caricature on. I've done a little thumbnail sketch uh, based on this one. But she's normally with glasses, so I've actually had to put glasses uh, back on her because she's normally uh, with that look at the size of that that's I mean can unless she's really diminutive that's a really big painting so and they're really good she's got a good handle on expression and perfect you know it's just really cool really well done <laughs> Yeah, Lou Reed is our friend from London, Boris. <laughs> it's really cool. She's got a beautiful eye for detail, has Judy. So let's hope that we can uh, that I can do her justice. All right, let's uh, move ahead now. Let's go. So I've done a thumbnail sketch, uh, just basically working out a nice shape was a bit of a tackle for me because most of the shots the photos of her are either blurry or they're a combination of blurry and front-on which are quite I mean okay it's a challenge of front-on caricature I quite like three-quarter views like this because I can get a nice um, shape going um, if I was to sort of very sim simplify this it's kind of nice to think about simplifying shapes because m my idea of caricature i don't know if it's right for everybody but for me at least it's a way of sim using simplification and exaggeration so you can only really exaggerate something if you break it down into very simple forms and that's what i've done here so from that i'm kind of extrapolating a lot of the details from the reference and i'm concentrating in this sort of mask zone i call it a mask it's more like a mexican mask isn't it rather than a mask a lot of people uh, concentrate on the details of the eyes and the nose a lot of cartoonists uh, uh, do that and they call that sort of a, a mask zone you know the eyes um, but really there's a rhythm and uh, uh, there's a dialogue that that happens between the elements between the eyes and the nose and the mouth and that comes down to this 
structure which is underneath the skin doesn't look very happy does he so everything kind of connects in very subtle ways and they have these incredible um, muscles which uh, push and pull and contract and things like that now the upshot of this is that although the human um, muscles and face are very simple to very similar to say a simian skull right so if you look at a human skull next to a monkey skull obviously we're bigger <laughs> we're, we're, we're tougher but um, there are a lot of similarities right and the same is true for the muscles they don't have like a skinned version of a monkey head to show you to prove it to you but the same amount of muscles and tendons and, and things in the simian skull around the, the, the monkey head but uh, and the same with cats and dogs as well the difference is the use of these muscles so monkeys have a very limited range of expressions humans on the other hand have an incredible amount of uh, expressions and different ranges and micro expressions and all of this has a lot of meaning so this is how we communicate so we don't use it just for eating and squinting at the sun we actually use it to communicate in a very um, uh, deep and meaningful fashion all right so um, this is uh, so we're going to concentrate on the mask zone this area so we're going to look at drawing keeping our attention on the relationships between these forms even though we've moved them and arrange them in different proportions so we're messing with the proportions okay so we've, we've actually moved the goalposts this is pertinent for <laughs> this weekend isn't it we actually moved the goalposts but the ball's still in play okay so we've changed some of the parameters but the it's uh, the ball is still going to to hit goals hopefully for us um, the other thing to, to consider is quite even lighting so I guess you'd probably look at uh, a light source that comes in from the top right and uh, that means that um, elements will be shaded on the bottom left hand side of the of the object the other thing to consider is because of you know that you've got angles and things so you've got tilt you've got the eyes sort of uh, uh, at an angle because the head is obviously tilted at an angle the head is also rotated as well so it's not just it's uh, it's tilted but it's also rotated as well all right so that's uh, something to consider she has got a lot of hair so that's going to take us a little bit of time um, and I've taken the opportunity to sketch up the thumbnail onto the toned paper and why are we using toned paper because toned paper is still a sketch but it's going to still pe a pencil on paper essentially but instead of graphite we're using colored pencils in these uh, this these examples are prismacolors these are soft leads we're also going to be using a harder lead which is a polychromo now i've used this pretty much all my life polychromo for me is able to get thick and thin lines but i can um, draw them without uh, committing too early so it's a little bit of a cheat for me it's easier than say um, drawing with uh, or, or you know, inking with a brush or a pen so it's a way of still keeping it flexible enough to change as I go all right so let's uh, let's get into some details now with the brown uh, brown pencil of course we're building up um, tone and shadow uh, and we're going to use the brown the black pencil actually we're missing a bone in her nose there that's too much of a scoop so let's try to try to sharpen it I think would be better yeah that seems like it works We'll know uh, sooner or later. Um, 
caricatures are, you know, the, the more you distort something, the further away the goalposts are. So that means you may not uh, make that uh, goal, that all this all important. Um, Look, I'm, I'm going to be pulled up against this anyway, but um, I don't have enough sports analogies for this uh, for that premise to work. So um, the touchdown, I was going to say, the end zone, the 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 goalposts, the goalposts are moving. So move the parameters, a lot of the shapes that um, uh, are to do with the proportions of things. Okay. So I've moved those around. So there's a different kind of narrative happening in the um, in the face. Um, at the same time, th th everything has to have a proportionate uh, effect. So it's kind of a cumulative thing as well. So the more you change something, the less it's going to look like that person. And if you don't pull it back somehow, somewhere, in the drawing, then it's that it's going to have a cumulative effect. So it's going to look more and less and less like a person and more and more like something else. So it's always good to um, have a, a, like one eye on the prize, so one eye on the drawing, one eye on the on the uh, illustration and always refer back to the photograph, to the to the reference, because it could be something small that you're missing that you might need in the final analysis in the final drawing. So that's something to consider. Also, there's a lot of blurry shots um, in her Instagram feed, a lot of blurry photos. And um, that presents an issue. So I've got to try to find what's, um, what's actually happening with her her face hopefully not make up too much the more you make up again the less you know it makes sense to the uh, final result she's got a lovely face there's a lot of muscles here there's Certainly, use not uh, a stranger to to talking. She seems very gregarious, very animated, is the word. I think. Uh, remember the lights coming down from the right, so we're going to favour the uh, shadows forming on the the left hand side. So that's going to be good to catch. So Judy Nadine's um, penchant for rock stars is really interesting because it's it's great when an artist sort of adheres to their passions of, uh, you know, whatever it is. Because then they can really pour a lot of um, energy into showing us why we should care. Why, why should we love Jimmy Barnes? It's because, um, you know, she made us uh, love Jimmy Barnes by her drawing by her painting. So it's the attention, the love, the attention to detail and the um, the narrative part of the drawing. So you might disagree with me but my take on this stuff is that there's two kinds of narratives. There's the narrative of of the subject, which is, in this case, is Judy. There's also the narrative of the artist, in this case, is me. And that's part of the dialogue that is happening here in this process, because the process is 
is more it's bigger than the than the concept so the process itself is really important okay now I'm going to be I'm zeroing in on her eyes here so I'm going to be and I'm looking at but very blurry photos so I might be a bit quiet while I try to analyze there's a lot of things here because you know especially with makeup too makeup's designed to obscure a lot of the anatomy so the shape of eyes etc um, and you've got to sort of remember that and try to build um, truth back into the um, into the drawing okay already I've made a mistake be careful with the uh, black pencil because it's quite um, unforgiving okay so I'm gonna look for some hmm. I think what I'll do is I'm going to simplify some of these shapes. Um, luckily, she's got blonde hair, so that it's going to be easier to draw than having to colour in a lot of uh, black hair. It also makes it easier for um, the drawing process because some of the line work is already achieved with a brown pencil. So, so all I really have to do is help the contrast a little bit. I'm sharpen this. That's good. So these angles and things I'm exaggerating from contours that I see in the process in the in the photo. Angles and things are just sort of um, use a blend of cartoon simplification and. general bullshittedness um, just <laughs> just to, just simplifying uh, elements so that I can push and pull them like plasticine you know the simpler it is the easier it is to 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 bend to your will let's try to get some more contrast in here in the shadows have the hair come back Okay. Good. So far, so good. nice when you see um, natural hair shapes they fall to logical um, in logical formats logical forms it's not sort of um, overly teased okay here we go tighten again into the eyes we're getting tighter um, don't forget like there's makeup there so there's mascara so you have to keep that in mind and sort of create some logical you know you need to, to focus on the on the anatomy of the eyes when you're drawing eyes irrespective of the makeup so sometimes Photographs don't really show w what you should see, right? They're not, all of the information is not in photographs. They're just there to really guide you. You really need to 
interpret them properly. That works. I think I put her lower lashes in. She's got mascara there. Lower muscle. Hmm. Let's take away a little bit of the, the dark here. I'm going to have refer to one of the other photographs for this um, uh, for the eyes to get just to sort of check, but at the moment it seems to be all right. Let's see if I can do it. Okay. Actually, where are her other glasses? Glasses are good fun to, um, I'm glad I um, opted to put them in, um, they're actually really good fun to play with um, because they're a good indicator of perspective, they're really strong indicators of angle and rotation and they have an individual shape which complements the shape of the eye, so you know if the eye is um, something like that. Glasses actually sort of unintentionally um, replicate that sort of ovalness, the, the, like ripples from a pond, you know, that, that ripple out from the pebble, th from the pebble. Um, it's really nice uh, glasses they're really nice to accentuate um, eye shapes so always look before you leap you know all glasses don't take them for granted they're not all perfect um, you know shapes think about the uh, structure I think about the the angle and the rotation and the thick and thin parts and uh, where the lens is, how thick the lens is, etc. So, you know, pencil is a great way of um, giving you the opportunity to test, to try the lines out before you commit. So the darker you press, obviously, the more you commit to those lines. All right, so let's... Uh, actually leave that there but continue with the hair underneath it's almost like creating this sort of lens effect lost my photos where is she there she is a lot of muscles um, on her face as so she communicates visually got a lot of expressions is that a kind way of saying she's got a lot of lines yeah but kind of but lines are very important for c communication you know it's lines are more than just uh, showing where your face has been It's an indicator of where your face is going, uh, I guess, too. But um, 
it's more a case of um, what are the processes, the thought processes and emotions that are prevalent in your life. I think she's fairly even um, emotionally. I think she's a very even-tempered person. I might be wrong, but doesn't doesn't seem to be a lot of frowning going on. You know, not just from the expressions, but the effective expressions over time tend to leave patterns and lines that uh, are un un inescapable. Always, uh, you know, caricatures are very particular, right? It's not just the overall face that you're caricaturing but you're caricaturing independent elements. Caricatures independent elements of the nose, of the eyes, of the mouth, the teeth, down to the teeth themselves. So everything is, um, you know, caricature is a, is a sort of a process. It's not an end result. It's a process of, of, of response, analysis and response. So you're analyzing the reference and you're responding to that reference in a certain way. So I've seen some, uh, I keep going on about this, um, Robert Crumb's cars, if you want to, I think he calls them heaps, but they're, Robert Crumb is a cartoonist, but his attention to detail is incredible. And uh, to the extent that, you know, these 1940s Buicks and Edsels and things like that have a, a, they have a, a real truth to them and they're exaggerated. But, you know, the details are there. And you know, in many ways, uh, Judy's the same with her rock posters, with her caricatures in general, you know, um, with her work. She's, uh, she loves the detail and that's, um, that's really important. It w it's what makes um, her work uh, extraordinary and stands out. So it's those, those it, you know, intentions and at attention to detail. So it's the intention and the attention. It's important. We kind of take, you know, cartoons, caricatures and things. A lot of people take them for granted, but really, I, I love them because they're really insightful, not just of the subject that they're, that they're illustrating, but of the artists themselves, because artists focus on different lessons, different things, different elements. And when you see that in a drawing or in a caricature, you know, it's a very interesting, it's like um, somebody taking you down a well-worn path, right? And then suddenly, oh, there's a gate. What? There's a gate? I never noticed there was a gate there before. Yep, there's a gate. Let's go through the gate. Wow. So it's, you know, even though you're looking at something familiar, they're pointing out some specific specialness that um, makes it really exciting. So... You know, there's, there's nothing wasted in that attention to detail. It's not sort of superfluous. You know, it's, it's really there f purposeful. And there's a reason for it all. And uh, that's why I love, um, that's why I love caricatures. I love looking at people's, at people's work, you know, and it's more than just the likeness. Hopefully we get to a likeness, to get, we get to a point 
somewhere we say, ah, oh, this looks a little bit like Judy. Um, but really, the, the journey itself is the value, at least for the artist, at least for me. Um, you know, that's what I like about the process is not getting getting some uh, recognizable features uh, down, but uh, actually having the ability to learn something and benefit from this, uh, this process and look, there's a gate. And I didn't know that there's a gate before. No. Looking at uh, Judy's work, you can kind of get that um, specialness of the subject. So it's the attention to detail that um, gives you that ability. Let's, let's enjoy it for a second. Where is she? So, there's Kate Blanchett. It's beautiful. This is incredible. Bob Dylan. This is lovely. Look at the Look at the, I mean, okay, look at that, but forget that. Look at this. You know, the eyes, the mouth, the nose, everything there. It's a beautiful, it's a lightly caricatured portrait, but it is everything a portrait should be and more, you know. You wouldn't get that in a normal portrait. This is very, it's an investigation. So who, she actually investigates, it doesn't look like she's investigating anything there but she does investigate so that's uh, that's really important and that's what i admire in uh, in her work so i love seeing you know things that uh, i haven't noticed before about the uh, subjects i think it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of fun and you know drawing especially caricatures let's face it it should be fun if it's not fun, there's something busted. Um, should always be fun. Drawing is a very strange thing. Um, painting, you know, I've done a lot of painting in my life, so I can tell you that it's not an easy thing. It's not something that, you know, it's probably a good hundred hours at least if not more, of work in her uh, paintings. So that's a lot. Someone who has a very short attention span like me, it's, it's a terrible um, amount of time. So you need a lot of dedication to to keep at it for that length of time, to hold your attention for that length of time. Okay, what I'm going to do here is grab the... Where did I find the information on her hair? Probably this one. So, okay. So when you move um, heads around, you tend to lose a lot of the um, connectivity of forms, of especially hair. So, because you're moving elements of the face around, making elements bigger, you know, try uh, revealing and obscuring different parts of the form of the hair. So, it's a sort of a um, a losing win. Um, situation you lose some of the uh, aspects and and you you have to and you win others you you have to show other elements so I'm just simplifying her her beads and uh, her dress a little bit just to sort of give it I like that sort of scarf effect 
of her outfit. Um, but you know, you've got to simplify in order to compete, in order to complete, sorry, not compete, uh, in a certain time frame. Otherwise, you'd be here for a thousand hours. And this isn't Twitch. Can't do a thousand hours. One day I will. I think that would be fun to do. Not a caricature. Well, a caricature, but a painting maybe. You know, spend a bit of time. A few days. Be nice. We'll get back to oil painting. I don't know what, uh, actually, I haven't spoken to her about that. I don't know what medium she uses. I presume she's uh, like me. She'll kind of favor a lot of different mediums that like watercolor, acrylic, and oil. I'm not a big fan of acrylic, um, I must admit. It's um, something that uh, I do use for underpainting for oil, but um, I tend to stay away from it because um, uh, oils, oil paint. It tends to be a bit easy to manage because you know it doesn't dry uh, as quick so it, you can kind of um, create something as you go rather than you know stick to a fully worked out plan And I like uh, the way that it treats um, skin tones and flesh. Okay, here we go. Just clean up a little bit, sharpen some of these lines, make them a little bit more stand out, stand outish. Just cleaner, sharper. It's good to have the brown pencil underneath actually. It gives the uh, black pencil a little bit more um, itself, all the strokes a little bit more form. So this is getting a bit cold, so I'll warm that up. So the idea of the brown pencil is really, it's really good for skin. Um, you know, for drawing animals and people, because it it has a warmth to it, and this is quite this is a warm grey um, paint, uh, sorry, paper. Um, but it's it's quite it's it can, it's quite neutral. I think it's more neutral. So I could work on a brown paper. You know, you get really a lot of um, warmth. Uh, in that but you know I like the uh, ability of the grey paper to try to um, build up the the shadows the warm tones of the flesh that you're alluding to with uh, uh, a, a more of an organic slower process let's go back to the reference we started with okay because that's where we're going to go use our lighting Noses are great fun in uh, caricatures. Um, actually, some of hers uh, actually yeah, let loose. <laughs> it's beautiful. Look at the depth, the distance. You know, it's an impression you get of all these things. You know that uh, you exaggerate those impressions: the thick and the thin, the small and the big. You know. 
and look at the detail that that and you know and the narrative behind it can't read it anyway um, it's, it's really important to, to focus on those details to bring this illustrative uh, storytelling to the picture I think you're great Judy I think you're brilliant love it love your work okay here we go so we've got a light source where are we coming in from that side this is a lovely pencil this can you know sculpt with it. it's just it's beautiful for describing um, light just works so so well against the gray paper makes it a really pleasure to uh, to draw Good fun. So the white pencil is 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 catching, able to describe the light that's being caught by uh, a lot of these um, forms, muscles, and wrinkles, etc. It's also good for uh, the textural qualities, you know, shine elements of shine because faces are not sort of e they're evenly lit even though they're evenly lit some of them are evenly lit what I was going to say was um, parts of, different parts of the face are more reflective than others so that they you know they're shinier uh, in various parts like the cheeks have a usually a nice um, pinpoint of uh, light You know, lacrimals and areas of skin near the lacrimals of the eye. Sounds like I know what I'm talking about, but a lot of it is um, pure conjecture. Conjecture. Make it up as you go. You make um, decisions based on how you feel, how you respond to these um, these elements. So we're getting a good uh, contrast coming down, I think, and uh, now we're getting into the teeth and the gums. Looks 
like uh, from the photographs, very glossy teeth, which mean that uh, got very hot spots at the tops. So very, because teeth are very rounded, aren't they? It's the impression that I'm getting anyway. presidential debate still going on I can see yuck 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 my opponent is a jerk no my opponent is a jerk if my opponent wins he'll do this no if my opponent wins he'll do this I love um, what was it in Bugs Bunny, Yosemite Sam was running for governor or something, and he had to kiss <laughs> babies and things like that. It was really funny. I love it. Oh, I learned so much from the Bugs Bunny show. Especially from Foghorn Leghorn. I just adored Foghorn Leghorn. Sort of like a, a combination of um, what was his character like? Foghorn Leghorn was like um, I don't know Colonel Sanders and Jackie Mason. <laughs> so it's kind of like a really strange southern drawl with Yiddish gags. I love it. Yeah, but you want to feel good, uh, you know, if you're feeling sad or lonely or whatever. Just put on your um, Looney Tunes DVD. You may have seen it a million times. Well, I'm exaggerating, aren't I? You may have seen it hundreds of times, you know, these um, short films. But they're so funny. They're so funny. And they really, they make me feel good. Make me happy. God knows we need to feel happy these days. Let me get out my Foghorn Lakehorn DVD in a sec. I'm going to, when this is over, I'm going to binge um, a whole series of Widow Hen and that fantastic beagle, the dog, and the chicken hawk and foghorn. All right, so let's uh, see what we can do. What more damage can we do here to Judy? Let's try to get these things. And this thing leaked the other day, so I'm a bit sort of nervous. Um, this is a paint pen at Posca. So it's got a little ball bearing in it. This is a fine point. So I need to get some lights in her eyes. Let's go back to her, find a nice shot. It's got so many blurred photos. Let's try to find one that's um, Okay, I'm not getting much luck, so I'm going to have to guess a lot of this.
So I often put this uh, side light in, which helps to establish a formal three dimensional construct. Which is good for sort of, you know, um, making it look more 3D, if you know anything about me. I'm all about the 3D. I love 3D. I do love 3D. But I like the idea of form. I think it's, um, it's really important to... Um, Or a drawing because it's sort of like uh, you know the seven elements of art in one drawing which is really special so you get the shape the lines beautiful lines the shape you know the lines make shapes and the um, the form the three-dimensional construct of the drawing and tone, light and shade. And with the brown pencil of course you're alluding to warmth and colour. And you're able to get nice variation of texture. It's like smooth and rough as well. And I like to use this sort of framing element, this device, so that the drawing doesn't float on the center of the page. It has some anchoring and compositional qualities. Okay. I'm going to actually switch to uh, a brush, this thing, which is another Posca, but it's a brush point, brush tip, and if we can pump it to get the pigment out into the tip, whoops, I knew that would happen. Um, you know, then that's... Uh, that's terrible. Let's see if I can fix it. Still a bit damp. You didn't come here to see mistakes. Sometimes mistakes happen. Just leave that uh, for a moment. I seem to be doing more harm than good with that. But that's good. Put that back. Okay, so what did I want? I did something. I'll fix the. Tone here. Good. All right, so um, I think what I might do is play with the contrast a little bit more. Um, you don't lean on the paint. Be a good idea. Should be a big sign saying that. Don't lean on the paint. Wet paint. Of course, that just 
you know, law of what they call it, Murphy's law. I call it Shem's law. Of course, you'll lean on it. So, just helping the contrast a little bit. Some birds um, arguing outside. Okay, so it's still wet, so I'd be careful with uh, how much I. I'm going to make another mistake, aren't I? Doesn't matter. So I'm painting in the negative space around the um, around her drawing, and hopefully that will give me a bit of structure with uh, composition and balance. Uh, just make it sort of stand out from the background. So. So the seven elements of art, you're now establishing a background, an environment, which is space. The seventh element This, this is good. I like the. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm not gonna cover in all this with this brush because it's too small. But I am going to bring in a black Posca marker, which is gonna help with the um, filling in. And the black Posca marker, like this. This is an. This is not Indian ink. This is a. The pigments in the handle, and you squeeze it, and it comes down to the tip. So it's like a calligraphic ink, which is a, it's like Indian ink, but it has a bit more flow. So Indian ink's very, uh, very strong. And very black. And when I was working for Murdoch and the City Moor Hill, but um, I was doing a lot of this black backgrounds and it would cut it would pool in certain areas the Indian ink and you know it would be shiny so all of a sudden somewhere I mean didn't it didn't hurt the reprographic quality of the artwork but it just really annoyed me and you know even more annoying um, where it pooled it would create a metallic sheen which was like you know salt in the wounds so the proportions that I've exaggerated here, I've done that because it's it's like um, an invitation to play. It's it's really sort of like you know not uh, coming up. I mean, they're, they're shapes that I'm exaggerating, or that I'm thinking that they're there. They may not actually be there, but they kind of give me a an area, a playground, a goal a goalpost. You know, uh, and then 
you're kind of moving in in the play itself in the in the um, the process you're moving things around a little bit and changing the references and changing the um, the proportions hopefully with keeping the narrative the same so the narrative is the end narrative narrative is the recognition of the character um, the true narrative is the fact that you're an artist drawing this so it's not just the end result it's the process itself and sometimes, you know, that speaks volumes, doesn't it? So that's the choices we make, isn't it? The, uh, why do you make my nose so big? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? It's just a process of choice of, you know, play. And sometimes those elements, those choices are evident in the reference sometimes not sometimes it's just like you're going with your gut feeling and that's really the best explanation of it because you know really to do it, I mean if you're doing an analysis and and the caricature is uh, truthful I guess in terms of the justification for the changes for the distortions then every caricature of that person will be the same and it's never the same, never. And that's because the game itself moves. The, the, the process itself dictates the um, end result. So, there she is. In all her splendor. Uh, should I put a maybe? Mm, okay. Look, you have to you have to make a decision. Stop, and that's it. And then you just that's it. You don't touch it anymore. Um, obviously, you know. You never pay attention, so um, you keep fiddling. But uh, you know, at this stage, I think I'm quite happy with uh, the result. Um, never had the honor of meeting her, but uh, you know, she's a very, very talented person and uh, a very interesting face. You could see incredible, you know, personality and animation, and um, not afraid to make faces, which is good. And you know she's very very adept at capturing these uh, incredible iconic um, personalities so beautifully. I mean, really, really well done. Um, look at that; it's magnificent. Just the, everything there—the mood, the you know expression. Look at that's just pure joy. That's a really beautiful painting. Of uh, Chrissy, and I think Christine, Christine, or whatever. David, you know, with the different uh, eye. One green, one blue, I think, and even the pupil size is different too. I'm not sure. I think that's from a car crash or something. Tim Minchin, you know. Elfin proportions, but an incredible amount of intensity, and she's got that wildness. I think uh, in that uh, that expression, it's beautifully done. Beautifully <coughs> done. Uh, Let me kill Mister. I don't know him, but <coughs> well done. And I forget him. <laughs> I forget who that is. But you know, look at that. Just such humanity, such beautiful humanity in her work. This is Jimmy. That's lovely. All right. So this is uh, my. Um, this is Judy Nadine. Where is the photograph? The reference I was working from. Uh, 
I added that. There it is. I was working from that. So um, this is my take on it, and uh, this is Franz Cantor, uh, and you know, saying thank you, Judy, for your work, and um, I will catch you guys uh, on the flip side. Bye bye.